So HashiStack from the perspective of a web dev. Hey, I'm a web dev. <laughs> My name is Mason AC. I'm a full stack software engineer from uh, Duke Energy. We're a Fortune 500 uh, company and North America's largest energy generation utility. Uh, I've been developing for five, going on six years or so. And the reason why I'm giving this talk today is to simply tell my story of my real life experience into uh, the introduction to the hashy stack. Uh, I'm very much so learning, like many of you. So um, you know, this is an opportunity for me to be vulnerable, give a peek into my interactions, and even our enterprise's interactions with ingesting the hashy stack into our infrastructure to help us move into the future. Um, keeping in mind, again, we're a 100-year-old company, so there's a lot of old mentalities and things like that that we have to overcome to keep us moving uh, in the right direction. Um, but I'll be referencing other colleagues, myself, um, their perspective on how they feel about Hashi products, and just try to eventually just uh, advocate for us to our developers, us as de developers, excuse me. So uh, I think we all can agree that uh, snakes, uh, spiders, Bigfoot maybe, <laughs> and change. Change is scary and can be a challenge to face. And inside of a highly regulated, hyper-successful organization like Duke Energy, that's no different. So if you think, if you see here, uh, this, this beautiful <laughs> building that I work at here, this innovation center, Duke Energy has tried to, uh, is trying to become more than just an energy generation utility. So what that means is they've uh, set some really aggressive goals while being uh, net zero carbon emission by 2050, and uh, half of that by 2030. So we have to have another way to be able to increase our resources to continue to uh, grow as a revenue-based business. And the way they're going about doing that is through the uh, Idea Lab. It, it was originally called the Idea Lab, and now it's called Digital Transformation, which is where I work. You know, they hired a new CTO, they bought, built us a new building. So it's a lot of pressure you can imagine as a dev with the expectations that they have behind what, we're, what they're trying to get us to do. So me, my story being introduced into the Hashi Stack was back in 2018. I was a green dev, I placed on a really mature team, tasked with building the front end application of, a, um, of an app. Taking it all in, you're hearing all the acronyms, all the buzzwords, um, innovation, speed, agile, security, 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 security. And among a lot of these things was a thing called Vault. Uh, sat down, told the code, and at this time, time wasn't my friend. And so I just knocked out that front end application, a tiny bit more season, you know, as the next product is beginning to spin up in these architecture meetings, you're hearing the same buzzwords, acronyms, agile, innovation, security. And to help with that, uh, that security piece was something called Vault. So of course, the bell goes off. What is this Vault? Why are we using it? How do I use it? Let me educate myself. A little bit of Googling, I found the answer. Now, I don't stack overflow, but on a YouTube video by the company CTO Armand Dadgar, where he explains the what, the why, and the points to how we'd be able to use this product. Learn that Vault is a part of the hashy stack. It's a tool that answers the secret management problem, naturally. What's the secret? Why is it a problem? A secret is a, separate, a set of different credentials, anything that may grant you authentication or uh, authorization, excuse me, to a system. Some examples you may be familiar with, usernames and passwords to log into an application, database credentials to log into a database and access data, or even API keys and tokens. As I keep digging, I realize why this is such an issue. Come to find out it's all an almost inevitable that I have unknowingly publicly exposed secrets temporarily. I thought I were special. But an article I read spoke that for years, developers have been inadvertently publishing credentials to that grant access to a myriad of systems such as databases, web hosting accounts, encrypted email, various apps. It's an easy mistake to make that can lead to catastrophic breaches, particularly when the credentials can unlock systems that are crucial to business functions. Common ways are through hard-coded secrets, right? Like adding secrets to an HTTP request to test a new API call, forgetting to remove them, or publishing to a version control system, or placing secrets inside of CI/CD config files. Again, anywhere public is a no-no. Remembering the name of the game is security, and keeping private data in while allowing granted people or group access. 
So it's a huge responsibility to manage and a hard problem to solve. You may ask yourself, now why? Now, you have the managing and the storing of the secrets. You have the authentication of secret management policies. You have reliability in the system that is highly scalable and resilient. And then you have an audit trail of the traffic of who has access to that data. A whole bunch of things that developers, quite frankly, <laughs> we don't want to deal with. So the way uh, the security team knew that, we knew that. The good thing is Vault handles all that for us. Problem solved. And after asking this and that team about our legacy systems that got us to use in Vault at, at present, I started to understand the why behind why we as an enterprise moved to Vault. We came from PAM, or traditional privileged access management systems which is managing DBAs or sysadmins, managing people. Uh, and I hear that user experience is horrible. On top of that, uh, we, moved, we moved away from that. We went to, we went to uh, Vault, where it cares about what I and other devs cared about, which is the ability to focus on the application itself. It handles the granting and the revoking authorization to different portions of data and applications themselves in an easy, fast, and secure way. The way I found that Vault answered that, the manager, the storage is a secret, the authentication is secret management policies, reliability and scalability, while having an audit trail is an easy to understand UI. And the moving and the, uh, the management, excuse me, of keys and secrets, seamless. The process is simple. Instead of the traditional create a ticket and wait for an understaff and overworked team to get back with you, they're eventually going to mess something up. It was the product owner would make and assign privileges to 80 groups, one for us devs, one for the customers, one for the business people. I'm so over here still coding. Our CICD team would create a cookie cutter vault platform with the security rules baked in and concourse pipelines, but configured it for our app specifically. Meanwhile, I'm still coding. Dev team would handle the setting up of our Apple G proxies per environment the key and secret generation, and placing of the keys and secrets inside a vault. We set up the environment variables in our app's code, fly pipelines, get all green, hopefully, and I'm off. Back to coding, just wearing my dev hat. And as a part of our business rules and prod, every 90 days we'd have to rotate our Apigee keys and secrets. Maybe, usually a daunting task, but as a dev, the experience is as simple as revoking the old keys, generating new ones, updating all my environment variables, and changing the keys and secrets in Vault. And then I'm back to coding. So you, if you can understand the use case here, we were building an application that was using uh, drones and infrared imaging to take pictures and fly solar farms. And if the solar farms emit, uh, emitted a heat signature, that means they, were, uh, they weren't operating properly. So if that is the case, of course, we need to send somebody out there, but you don't want them shooting in the dark. So if you can imagine, I mean, this is a pretty cool app, but there's a lot of places in which data can be compromised. We have Vault handling all of that for us. Our front end's application identity and storage is in Vault. Our database credentials inside Vault. Our feedback loop, our things to help us, uh, our AI entry points, all those things, are in Vault. Access to all those keys to unlock those systems, crucial to our apps and business functions, are inside Vault, per instruction of our security team. So as an enterprise, we're placing a lot of value and trust inside this Vault portion of the Hashi stack. On top of that, us devs not only like, but also believe in the tools we're using and be instructed to be used by our uh, Duke team. Now, I didn't mention this before. I feel like the frustration has been all too often in the past. We're asked to use tools that we may not ourselves believe in, but we have to use it. That's what the job asks. But the difference here is that when you have something that you actually believe in and you have, you know, people who are uh, the people who are making these decisions or they're aware what was going on in the developer's landscape, it makes it a little bit easier to adjust and to kind of get passionate about it yourself. That's the one thing I especially appreciated about Vault. It's ease, it's ease of access. And it was built, in my opinion, personally, uh, with a developer in mind, the developer's experience uh, to do what I want to do, which is, again, over here coding. 
Now, because of the reputation that Vault has had and has spread throughout our enterprise, again, is being used and consumed through our legacy apps, any new apps that will be being built in the future, that has proceeded and poured over into us adopting Terraform. Of course, Terraform is an infrastructure tool that lets you define both cloud and on-prem resources. Excuse me. It's important because if an IT infrastructure, especially if something as serious as major power, isn't flexible, reliable, and secure, we're not able to meet our goals and provide a competitive edge in the market. We are a for-profit business. So the reason why we're using it is because we've decided to move from on-prem S3 compliant storage to a cloud model, cloud architecture. And we're gonna use Terraform to help us do that big lift and shift. I'm sure we can all see, if you see it in your minds, a 100-year organization trying to do, <laughs> Uh, you know, IT and things like that, it's a big lift and shift. And certainly, again, all that faith is being placed <clears throat> inside of Terraform. So what are other Duke devs saying about um, the Hashi stack? I think it'd be valuable to read one of these at least. Matt Whitley, he says, I've used HashiCorp Vault for a variety of applications from full stock, full, full stack <laughs> web applications to data integration products. Vault has helped our enterprise in storing, accessing secrets with our applications with almost no issues. I was especially impressed with how easy it was to use Vault with our enterprise was making a cloud transition to AWS Cloud. Our AWS infrastructure is controlled by Terraform, and the ease of use of when you, oh, excuse me, ease of use when storing our secrets made the transition much smoother. Whether we wanted to access Vault directly or combine Vault secrets with our AWS Secrets Manager, the documentation could not be more clear. My overall experience has been an overwhelmingly positive one, and I would recommend Vault for any enterprise that is looking for secrets management data encryption solution. So what's next? We've recently started to ingest console into our enterprise. So again, you see it. Vault's doing really well. We ingest that. Terraform's doing really well. We're going to start to ingest that. Well, we've been ingesting that. Now we're going to try something else, try some, an, adding another part of this. And why? Well, we're trying to create a secure connectivity solution using service mesh across all of our various runtimes spread across both on-prem and cloud applications. Those examples, on-prem, uh, Diamati, PCF, cloud, EC2, and PKS. So in conclusion here, I think as previously stated, again, I'm still learning like many of you, like many of you, uh, just like my organization. We're all learning, just trying to be better and everything, but we do see we're placing a lot of trust in uh, HashiCorp and the HashiStack being the one-stop shop to assist us in the ever-growing problem of application delivery. Thank you.